Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi, folks. Hey, Brandon, can you drop the uh, agenda into the chat? You're on top of it. Yep, I was doing that while he was just saying that. OK, so for those of you that are just joining us, check out the chat. It has the link to the agenda document. Um, go ahead and list yourself in the attendance. Uh, um, we'll get started shortly. All right, so while everybody is going through and adding themselves, uh, welcome to the first SIG security meeting in December. Um, we are gonna go ahead and get started. So we don't have very much on the agenda, so we'll probably be, just be doing the new member welcome, um, kind of discuss a little bit about what the SIG does. Um, looks like I'm gonna be the facilitator today. Brandon, do you wanna jump in? Um, so what we're going to do is if you're if you're new to the call, um, go ahead and click the link that Brandon posted in the chat. That is our agenda document. Add yourself to the attendance list. If you have an update and you're a previous member of the SIG, go ahead and just put it in the in the um, parentheses next to your name that you have an update. Or if you don't, put no updates. If you're a new member uh, on the attendance list. And if you're new, go ahead and introduce yourself and like, why you joined the, joined the SIG or what you're interested in. Brandon, did I miss anything? No, all good. I was all curious, right. who's Emily talking to on the phone? And she's talking to us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to you guys. I, I got new tech and I'm still working out some kinks with it. So, all right. So I'm Emily Fox. I'm the co-chair or one of the co-chairs of the SIG security. Um, I've got two awesome counterparts. JJ is one of them and Sarah is the other. Um, I know JJ's on the call. I'm not sure about Sarah. Um, my only update that I have today is that we had Cognitive Security Day um, during KubeCon and it was a huge success. So thanks to all of the program committee members that helped make that possible, as well as thanks to the CTF team for coordinating and running over 300 plus misconfigured clusters in seven hours. 
coworkers. That was really awesome. And uh, the attendees of the, of the security day had a blast at doing the CTF. So definitely planning on doing that next year for EU. Um, there is an issue open for um, planning associated with that. We've closed down the program committee, and I think there's like one other person I have to add to this ETF team, so that'll be closed out shortly. So keep an eye out for that. Mark, you had a brief update or announcement? Sorry about the delay. Hourglass. Well, I'll go without video. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, what I wanted to share was the uh, the NIST. What was the NIST Big Data Group is morphing into Analytics as a Service, and they're preparing a presentation probably to this group, uh, really soliciting input to uh, kind of framing up what the needs might be in this space, and just to get ideas from this group, and uh, and then to get some steering to see if maybe that topic needs to be briefed uh, elsewhere. Uh, is, the genesis for this was a uh, Indiana University project called Cloud Mesh that's on GitHub, uh, but that we're kind of reformulating to try to leverage analytics as a service. The use case that's of interest to me and probably other people in this group is analytics around information security and probably telemetry writ large beyond that. So. Uh, stay tuned on that. They're talking about it for late in December. That's probably poor timing, but that's what they're looking at for now. I'll summarize that. No right. need to make notes. I'll put it in the notes. Can you make sure that we have an issue associated with that presentation so we're tracking it? We'll do. Okay. Uh, Brandon, you're the next one with a presentation or with an update. Yeah, so hi, uh, I'm Brandon. I'm a TL for, for Six Security. Um, so I just wanted to to kind of um, have a quick update. I was chatting with um, someone from the Red Hat team. They are working on this new project they call Rico. Recall, I can't pronounce it, so I'm not going to try. Uh, but the idea is uh, it's a project that's uh, a public, it's going to be a ledger kind of aim at um, recording uh, information about um, supply chain. So it's going to be a similar concept to certificate transparency, except it's going to be, you know, like um, um, supply chain versioning and signing transparency. Um, so they, they started a project and um, I talked to them about coming to present to the SIG, so that's something that probably will happen um, mid, mid to late January. Okay, thanks, Brandon. Uh, Pop, you are new, can you introduce yourself? Hello everyone, I'm Pop, Dan Pop Andrea. Uh, I work for Cystic and uh, just wanted to join and say hello to everyone. Thanks Hello. and welcome. Uh, I, I know I know some of these faces. I know some of these names, but uh, for those I don't know, hello. Matt Jarvis, you're. Yeah, hi folks. Um, I'm Matt Jarvis. I'm a developer advocate at Sneak. Um, as Pop said, there's a quite a few folks who I know on this call already. Um, uh, yeah, and I'm just uh, super interested to get more involved with what's going on in security across the whole ecosystem. This is the first kind of proper security focused role I've been in and, uh, you know, opening my mind to learning. Awesome. Thanks for joining. Chris Davis. Uh, yeah. Hi, I'm Chris Davis. Uh, my coworkers and pretty much everybody calls me Davis, uh, which is why my Zoom name is C Davis. Um, I uh, work for Amaze.io uh, and we uh, have a product, uh, Lagoon, which we have plans to try to donate to the CNCF uh, eventually. Um, so I'm a security engineer there and I'm just trying to keep our product as secure as possible and immerse myself in the security world at the same time, so. 
Great. It's wonderful to have you. Uh, John Zola, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. You're yeah, no problem. It's Ziola. Let me turn my video on. All right, great. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, my name is John Ziola. I am the CTO at a small security consulting company, and um, we work a lot in this space. And I'm a Apache Software Foundation member and a big fan of open source, somewhat new to the CNS, CNCF in general, um, but interested in getting, uh, getting more acquaint acquainted. Awesome. Great to have you. Alok Rod. Yes. Hello. Uh, I am Alok Raj. I am from India. I am working as a security analyst at Zenon Stack. And I am here to explore more about the security domain. Awesome. Great to have you. Um, Altaz Valani. Hi, everyone. Sorry, I can't uh, turn on my camera at the moment, um, but I uh, just wanted to introduce myself. Uh, I work for a company called Security Compass in Toronto, Canada, extensively involved in a number of different working groups. And I know some of you here from this working group as well, and I look forward to collaborating with you to help us uh, extend the body of knowledge of security going forward. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you for joining. Jacob. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Jake. I'm a DevOps engineer in Missoula, Montana. Uh, I have a little bit of background in security from several years ago. I used to work at uh, Sourcefire. Um, I was there for when Cisco did the acquisition thing. Um, lately, my day to day is just with uh, DevOps and Kubernetes. I'm looking to foray back into the security space. Um, I saw Micah speak at the AWS Container Day a couple weeks ago, and he sort of put out an invite to join the SIG. And I uh, curious and I want to check it out. So thanks for having me. Awesome. Thank you for joining. Tanner Rudolph. Yeah, uh, I've actually been through a few of these meetings, but uh, I'll go ahead and introduce myself again. Uh, <laughs> I'm Tanner Randolph. I run cloud native security architecture for Lowe's. Uh, so I'm responsible for all the public clouds, all the Kubernetes services, all the hybrid cloud implementations, all of our open source implementations. Uh, got a lot on my plate. So uh, That'd be interesting to uh, interested to get to know the guys that are actually uh, creating the foundations that we're looking to use. Awesome, we're happy to have you back, uh, Andrew Martin. Do you have any updates for us? Andrew, I think your mic's on your head. I don't know if we can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> That's very kind of you to interrupt the flow. Um, yes, uh, just to say thank you to everybody who organized the Cloud Native Security Day. Um, it was really a wonderful thing to attend and uh, everyone who assisted with the CTF as well. Um, it's It was a roaring success and uh, contributed to by volunteers. So just extending copious thanks to everybody. Awesome. Daniel. Hi, yes, uh, my name is Daniel Tobin. Uh, I'm currently security lead for a data layers uh, startup called uh, Cyril. Um, we've been um, working with OPA um, with our product and uh, I've been in like security space for, for a while. So wanted to, to start joining this SIG. So thank you. Oh, Emily, um, you're on mute if you're talking. Oh, I think she sounds like she's on the phone. Uh, I'll, I'll continue then. Um, Diego Comas. Okay. Hey, hi. I was, I was curious what was happening. Uh, yeah, uh, hi everyone, I'm Diego. I'm, I'm not here, but I'm um, quite excited to to try to contribute and get more involved in the CNCF. I've been working in um, cloud security matters and cloud native security for the last few years. And yeah, I'm working in a company called Message Earth, uh, which does communications as a service. Yeah, I'm happy to see everyone on some phases that I know already. 
Awesome. Great to have you. Um, Ricardo Pitiera. Uh, hello. Uh, so uh, I'm Ricardo. I'm Portuguese and I work in a um, consulting company in, uh, company in Paris that is called Silenza and I'm a cloud and uh, security architect for them. And I'm starting to work a lot with uh, Kubernetes and uh, security and so on. Uh, so uh, it's f it's my first time here. So let's. Uh, I hope it's. Uh, I could help, and uh, I'm here to learn a lot. I think so. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> awesome. All right, uh, Amy. Do you want to do your PSA? Maybe we'll see if everything works. Public service announcement is that the EU CFP closes December 13th, which is much, much sooner than I think you all expect. Um, and, and yes, my comment is basically like, yes, please get your CFP things in. Um, that is a Sunday. So. Yes, and this is for KubeCon Cloud Native Con Europe, not for Correct. Cloud Native Security Day Europe. Correct. There will be different calls for that, um, but wanted to be able to just put a quick note in for CFP is coming. So, uh, Amy, is this a virtual event or is yes, that... this is the okay. virtual event. Right. Um, we are currently scheduled, cross fingers, everyone, for an in-person October event with virtual components. Awesome. Okay. Uh, next up, Raj Shrestha. Hi, um, I'm Raj. I'm, I'm based in the Seattle area, but I work for a company in the East Coast, uh, Unisys. And we started our uh, cloud native journey two years ago, where uh, I'm, I'm an architect uh, leading uh, our move to Kubernetes uh, and whole cloud native stack. So excited to be here. I saw you guys at the KubeCon North America and uh, was interested to join. Thanks for inviting. Awesome. So that's all the new members um, that listed themselves in the attendance. Was there anybody on the call that I missed? If so, please speak up. Okay, that sounds like it. So for everybody that is a new member, welcome. Um, we have a new members page that has some information about uh, being a member within SIG security and some things that you can potentially get involved in. So I just wanna recap a couple of things first. Um, when you join a couple of meetings and you get uh, involved in the group, you can do a PR and add yourself to the members list. Um, Brandon posted the new members uh, page in chat for those that are having trouble finding it. Um, if you're interested in going through and doing a little bit more with this SIG, we do have lots of issues that are open and several of them have a help wanted on them. And it's a great way to get familiar with the documentation that the group has, some of the efforts that we're working on. Um, Brandon, would you be comfortable talking about the security assessment working group and kind of what goes on there? Yeah, so, um, so for, for those that, um, let me do a quick introduction to those that knew about what security assessments are. Uh, so security assessments are a process that we go through with a couple of projects in the CNCF. Um, and the idea here is we help uh, the CNCF really evaluate what the security posture of a project is, uh, provide some recommendations to the project as well as for the CNCF to uh, what is the security state of the project in terms of its move from sandbox to, to incubation to graduation. Um, so we've done a couple of these over the past, I would say, year and a half. Um, and recently we decided to get together to kind of brainstorm and see what are aspects that we can uh, improve on, what aspects that we can change and kind of like optimize and document better. So um, we, we split into a brainstorming group and we came out with a couple things that um, we were targeting. So for those that are actually, you know what, I am going to share my screen. That will probably be easier. All right, can anyone, everyone see my GitHub picture? Okay, 
So assuming that you can see um, this, if you go into the repo into assessments, uh, there's a quick overview of what security assessments are, what we've been doing. And if you go into projects, uh, you can kind of see a couple of examples of what we did. So for example, um, I think the most recent was um, the key curve one and Spiffy Inspire. So if we go into this, we can kind of see what the security assessment is in terms of um, this is the overview and kind of the recommendations that we come up with. And also there is a self-assessment document, which is really a nice overview of what, are, what the project's about, what are some of the security considerations, and so on. Um, so after doing a couple of these, we decided to kind of see how we can improve it. Uh, so we got together and brainstormed and we have these issues here. Um, so if you click into the security assessment label on the issues, you see a couple of these. And there's like security assessment work group um, as a prefix and a title here. Um, these are what we came up with. So for example, um, if we look at um, getting more reviews for security assessments, uh, we talk about some of the ideas that we came up with during the brainstorming um, and you know, these are, this is, for example, a good first issue to look at, you know, uh, how can we attract more security reviewers um, to conduct security assessments because we are a volunteer, this is on a volunteer basis. And the idea is that if you're interested, um, you know, we'll put more information into the, the issues and then you, we can create a PR to modify the documents or be able to create these incentives for reviewers. So there is uh, a couple more that are out there. So, um, you know, there's some about improving the process, some about mapping it more to the TOC process. So then if you want to get involved with more the CNCF side of things, um, how do the SIG activities relate to uh, the CNCF talk uh, and the general project process, then this may be of interest. Um, and that's a whole range of different activities, right? So if you are um, looking at, you know, naming a scope of assessments, um, whether we should include, um, you know, security code analysis, for example, then this would be an issue to look at. So this is a couple of issues that we have today. So if um, I would say, if you're interested, uh, take a look through um, and if any of them are of interest to you, just, you know, I'll put a comment the issue and then we can chat from there. Thanks, Brandon. JJ, did you have anything that you wanted to talk about? I'm on mute. Um, I think mo most of it is covered and uh, uh, again, thanks. Uh, thanks to the team for pulling together the Cloud Native Security Day uh, and uh, kudos to Emily for uh, driving the whole thing. Uh, for the people that are new, uh, I do want to mention um, about the white paper as well, uh, the effort that we did uh, that's available on the repo. Uh, if there is a link, I'll post the link on the on the Skype and if there's a link that's posted uh, there. I just put it there. Yeah. So that is something that we've done. Uh, there's a lot more work there to be done. Uh, uh, Vinay, Aradna, uh, and uh, Brandon and Gadi has been uh, phenomenally helpful in uh, shepherding some of that, uh, some of those things as well. So reach out to any of us uh, if you have anything that you feel like you can contribute there uh, in addition to assessments. Uh, there's also a policy working group that, uh, uh, this is again for the people that are new. Uh, there's also a policy working group that's actually uh, running in um, uh, Asia time zone. Uh, and uh, they have a bunch of interesting stuff that they are working on. Uh, it's currently primarily focused on Kubernetes, like Kubernetes security policy stuff. But that's again, something that you can go drop in and listen in, uh, to learn more. It's, that's it. That's all I had. I had a quick question about the um, the white paper. Um, I thought it was a fantastic piece of work, by the way. It was really, really good. Um, 
are you considering that like a living document that's going to you know change over time as opposed to something that's just been cool? yeah, like very, yeah. very yeah. much document. definitely very much a living document yeah so the white paper um as it's currently written is considered a living document because technology is always subject to change as the security of that technology space um, the white paper, for those that haven't read it or have read it, is designed to be kind of a high-level understanding of what you need to do for end-to-end -end security for cloud-native products, uh, applications, and architectures. It is not intended to be a deep dive into any, any particular technical area that the white paper touches on. So if there is a particular subject area, such as container encryption or image scanning or something else in that space, for which the community lacks clear documentation on best practices or how to move forward in that area, those are all eligible to become independent documents that can be referenced back into the white paper. So we definitely see this as an evolving space. As we were going through and writing it, we realized that there was there's quite a few um, areas where security was just still very young and we have a lot more work to do. So as we identify those, we want to start doing a little bit more research on them, seeing what products are already in the space um, and then creating um, additional documentation for it to better help the community. Um, and a lot of the framework that's in the white paper as well as some of the topics that are touched on are going to uh, be contributed into the CNCF landscape to help uh, end users and customers and businesses and architects kind of navigate a little bit more about how all these components um, work together. So if, you, if you've read through the white paper, you'll notice that we purposefully try to avoid calling out any single product to solve a particular space. And that's kind of where the landscape comes in. Is the yeah. um, so DJ, I had a quick question on the security policy working group. Mm -hmm. um, how do we integrate all the good work that they are doing there with this working group? Because um, obviously there's overlap, right? Yeah, there is definitely overlap. It's a work in progress. It's on, uh, I have an open issue to uh, figure out an integration path between uh, them and us. Uh, they have been integrated way back uh, from the repo standpoint and then their work uh, goes on a living document that's attached to that. Uh, so it's a work in progress that I'm working on to cross pollinate. Okay. Again, I have one more question on the white paper, if appropriate. Go ahead, go ahead. Given the source is in Google Docs, and if, if we want to keep that updated and easy to modify, do we want to turn that into restructure text or a markdown, check it in, and like take contributions there? Or do we want to do a, a new copy of Google Docs and that's like, future version two, what do we want to do there? So everything for now should be managed in Markdown and the repo. So the most up-to-date version of the document is what's in our project in Markdown. And as, um, as we continue to add and modify and create more content for it, we'll have some minor updates. But we, I'm expecting after talking with the CNCF um, team that we'll be doing PDF publishment on uh, every release. So when there's a significant content change to the document, then we'll do a new PDF first. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> since I see a lot of new people, I also, also want to uh, reintroduce our TOC sponsors for SIG Security is uh, Justin and uh, Lister is. Justin, do you want to say hello to the- Hello, I, I'm, I'm Justin. Nice to, it's just really nice to have lots of new people here and I'm really, it's really exciting. Looking forward to all the things that we can do together. And uh, Amy uh, is sort of like the backbone for the entire of six security uh, that nobody sees, but <laughs> uh, she's been instrumental in bootstrapping a lot of uh, structure to the, to the group as we got started. Yep, that's mostly what I had. Yeah, I am your friendly neighborhood program manager. Howdy, that's all. <laughs> I can buy, I do things. She makes magic happen, yep. 
Yes, she does. Um, so that's kind of like all that I had um, scheduled for our agenda today. I'm expecting um, in the next week we'll have a little bit more um, formal things to cover on the agenda, some topics of discussion and maybe going through a few of the, the issues in the tickets um, or I don't know if we have any presentations uh, coming, uh, but those are definitely always eligible. Um, so if you've got something that you potentially want to talk about at a future meeting, there is a proposed agenda topic section of the agenda document. So just throw that up there. And if you have a particular date that you're interested in talking about that, also tag that in there. Um, that's all I have. Anybody have anything else? I would say also if you are interested in anything, um, create an issue. <laughs> If um, and in the past, if people are interested in the issue, we've seen it kind of turn into a project on its own. Now we will bring it into kind of the discussions that we have during the meeting as well. Can I ask a question? Um, and I'm sorry, this might have been covered, but is there any low hanging fruit or something? Like, I just want to pick up something and help out the you know the group, right? So, like, where would I find that? Like, hey, here's something that we need help with, or anyone in the you know that's joining that's new. I would say if you go into issues and select the good first issues, I think that couple there out there and just like, or even if, you know, if you're new and you're reading through the documents and you see something in terms of like formatting or like um, um, things you think could be improved, you can just like create a quick PR um, and, and make some small corrections. Thanks, Brand. I appreciate it. Yeah. We're also in the process of assembling the crew for the build pack security assessment. So if you want to join that and you can join in different capacity, I am uh, leading the charge on the review side and you can decide how much you put in. If you want to be like full on reviewer or you just want to observe the process and like externalize from that document some of the things or just like hang around while we have meetings, uh, that is open. And that goes to everyone. That space is open. Is there a concept of shadowing? Because again, I, I'm not comfortable taking the process. You know what I mean? Like, so is that the concept? Of, like, yes, there is. That? Okay. Pretty much. That's what it is. So welcome to do that and shadow and, and like you can shadow in a, in, a, in a more active way and get feedbacks and ask questions of why, why is this being done this way? Uh, Brandon gave a great over, overview that might have piqued the, the interest of some people, but you may want to learn more of like, the inner workings of the assessment and what actually goes down. So that's a great way to do it. People have done it before. Awesome. I'm, I'm, that's definitely something I'm interested in. I'll, 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 I'll speak to you, I guess, in the channel or whatever. Yeah, same here. That's something I'd be interested in getting involved with as well. Thanks, Andres. I, I link the issue in the chat, so you can just click on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm stoked to camp with extra extra hands of like capable like motivated people so right on i mean especially the the cross section i mean you got mad from snake and you got me from run from the runtime perspective you got i mean you couldn't ask for a better you know group so i'm excited for this likewise and for new members as you uh, participate in some of the upcoming and if we haven't gotten the assessment process updated yet, your feedback is definitely going to be appreciated as newcomers and like a fresh set of eyes on these things. I, I will also say the supply chain security catalog is also something um, that could help if I think we are looking in terms of um, new compromises and also uh, we are kind of like lacking a section there on um, remediation. So there's like types of attacks. And then we're talking about mitigations. There isn't a lot about that. So if that's something that you're interested in, um, that could also be something cool to work on. Yeah, so the supply chain catalog for those that probably have not discovered it in the repo yet was an effort um, by one of our members as part of the Intoto assessment, I believe. Um, and it's actually done a lot in that space. Um, we've begun kind of analyzing a little bit more of supply chain attacks that are occurring in industry and different ways that teams and individuals can kind of mitigate 
mitigate or, um, or resolve them when they occur. And a lot of the information that came out of that catalog collection was incorporated into the white paper for how do we kind of defeat some of these potential attacks from surfacing for organizations and teams. So it's still very young. There are a lot of attacks that have been happening. So if you're familiar with something that's not covered in the catalog, be sure to read through the definitions, kind of um, get a better understanding of what, how the attack occurred and what the ramifications were. Um, these articles do an excellent job of breaking it down, and sometimes they don't, so we kind of have to speculate a little bit about how it could have happened. But definitely, um, that's an excellent point Brandon brought up, is that, that that would love to have some attention from the community to kind of make that a little bit more robust and bring it up to uh, 2020 uh, time frame, well, late 2020 time frame. If nobody has anything else, I think that's it for today. Great. Thank you very awesome. much. So, awesome. Yeah, I'll give everybody 24 minutes back. Enjoy your day and thank you all for coming. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thanks for running it. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.